And here he is, the one, the only... The audience sounds eager tonight, George, and so am I. So let's go. What's the secret word? Uh, shall we consult the duck? Okay. Well, Groucho, uh, last week you just got started talking to Penny Kelly and Jim Balboni, and we ran out of time. So you asked them to come back tonight, and here they are. Would you come in, youngsters, please? Well, youngsters, welcome to your bet your life. Uh, welcome back. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. Let's see now. Uh, Penny, you're a student at North Hollywood High, and Jim, you're going to some high school in uh, Palo Alto. Have you decided what you want to do when you're out of school? Well, yes, I plan to be the president of the United States. <laughs> Well, it's not a bad job, of course, you realize it's only temporary. <laughs> now, how do you propose to wind up in the White House? How did you decide on that? Well, when I get out of high school, I plan to study law at college for a while. And uh, then I'm going to go to the House of Representatives, then to the Senate, then Governor, and then and President. <laughs> How's your golf game? <laughs> I don't play golf. You don't play golf, huh? No. Well, you may wind up in the Senate. You may never get into play. Now, Penny, what is your ambition when you get out of school? Do you want to be the wife of a president, or do you just want to get married and have a large family? No, I'm not planning on getting married till I'm about 24. I have, plan to have a career first. Uh-huh. At what? Uh, dancing and acting. Jim, can you wait until Penny's 24? <laughs> Well, I don't plan to get married until after I become a senator. <laughs> and then you're too old to get married. <laughs> How can you be a senator if you're not married and haven't got a family? Don't you understand, if you don't have any relatives, how can, you can't practice nepotism. <laughs> you know what nepotism is? No, Mr. Marks. You don't? No. Well, uh, let's say that you were a senator, and you had a brother-in-law who'd never worked. You put him on the payroll. Now, he doesn't have to do anything, but he draws eleven or twelve thousand dollars from the government. Well, that's crooked. That's... <laughs> well, you can call it crooked. We call it nepotism. <laughs> now, what kind of a career would you like to have, Penny? Uh, teaching dancing. Teaching dancing. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, are you a good dancer? Well, I've been studying for. 12 or 13 years and... Uh, Could you tell us some of the new steps? And anything you mentioned since the bunny hug will be new to me. <laughs> That's the last dance I did. Well, they're, uh, the cha-cha and the chalipso, rock and the what? roll. What was the second one? Chalipso. Chalipso. Is uh, that a variant of the calypso dance? It's something like, it's hmm. like a cha-cha. Could you show it to me? Well, I think so. It's pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> You better teach honest Jim Balboni. Uh, <laughs> he's the next president. He ought to learn how to dance. He may have to dance with Dolly Madison someday. <laughs> That's the last one I danced with. <laughs> Jim will do anything. Go ahead and show it to him. He's a young man. Go out here, Penny. And... Well, it's, uh, it's just like a cha-cha, only if you do it with a little hop, it's just one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, hop. Ready? How about it? Could you do that? I could try. Go out there and do it. <laughs> Jack, give us a little cha-cha uh, music, huh? dances exactly like Andrew Jackson. <laughs> well, you're nice kids, and both of you are obviously headed for big things. Especially Honest John here. <laughs> I think he's headed for the big house. <laughs> okay, well, let's play a bet your life. George, Mr. F, waddle out here, will you? Put it down here so they can see it. Huh? Now, uh, Penny, put it down here. 
right there. You think you could show the dance to Mr. Fenneman? Because, <laughs> you know, he's a concert. I was, uh, I was watching. Yeah. I saw it already. I think so, too. He's a natural dancer, and he's a... <laughs> He's comparatively a young man, a Shakespearean actor. I'm sure you'll have more trouble. Huh? What kind of music do you want, Chuck? Show the Texas Tom. Why don't you do the Texas Tom? I like the Russian River Drive. Come on, what kind of music do you want? I'll show you the Chuck, okay? I'm not my uncle. Well, you can talk. They didn't have any ballet music. Gotcha. I used to work in a bar room in Frisco, <laughs> what they call a spieler. What uh, category did they choose, George? Oh, I've forgotten now. <laughs> remember, you're a married uh, man with three kids. I just remembered. Uh, <laughs> she's got seven boyfriends. It's uh, American it? history, right? American history. Right. Yeah, well, you ought to eat that up. Huh? You understand how the game works? Penny, you works. picked the first one because you're a girl. Four chances to make These are tougher. Dollars. These are the easiest. These are the next, and this is the tough one. All right, $100. Now, if you don't win $500, you don't get a crack at the big money, so you got to play this strategically. Now, what is nepotism? Uh, let me... That isn't one of the questions, I'm well, just... That... Huh? Well, that's being crooked the right way. <laughs> that's a better uh, description than I gave before. <laughs> All right, for $100, Alexander Hamilton was killed in a duel by whom? Aaron Burr. Aaron Burr is right. Yeah. You now have $100 and three more chances to make five. See them shuffling along. Ichiko, Ichiko, Ichiko. <laughs> See them shuffle along. That's a you take song. your best pad, you real gal. Go down to the levee. <laughs> I said to the levee. <laughs> for $200, what naval officer was responsible for opening Japan to foreign trade? Hey, no nuzzling there. Just answer that. Commodore Perry? That's right. You now have $300. Two more questions to make the five. Another two. $200. Who was president of the Confederate States of America? Jefferson Davis. You said it. You're assured of coming back. You now have $500, so you'll be back for chances 10. This is, this is a gravy question. I said to the levy, I said to the levy. <laughs> and, uh, they don't write songs like that anymore. <laughs> They're writing songs of love, but not for me. This is for $300. They're not writing anything for me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Battle him of the Republic, I think. <laughs> For 300 smackolas, how many states comprise the Confederacy? <laughs> now, if you were Carl Sandberg, you'd know this immediately. Eleven. Eleven is right. and we'll see you a little later on in the program for a chance of two, five, or ten thousand dollars. Listen, don't be surprised if he becomes president. <laughs> well, we'll see you later, kids. It was fun uh, dancing with you. Groucho, Janet Willits, and Henry Calfane are waiting to talk to you. And I know you're going to enjoy uh, Mr. Calfane. He uh, happens to be a personal friend of mine, and I'd appreciate it if you uh, treated him well when he was out here. Uh, just, so, a uh, just a moment. What do you mean by that statement? You want me to give these people preferential treatment? 
Just because you happen to be related to one of them? Is that what I said? No, uh, uh, I just happen to know him. He's a nice gentleman. Well, and don't I... you feel that I'm nice to everybody, George? I don't know what I meant. I, I, well, I, uh, I don't feel well tonight, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I just, you know, it's a friend of well, mine. Uh, were you urging like... me to be crooked? No, not at all. Just, well, just... why did you want to mention the fact that you knew this man? You're um... under oath here, George. <laughs> I didn't mean you should help him. Just uh, be nicer than you are. No, that's not... <laughs> I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Where are these crooks? Uh, I think they're outside. Well, uh, unchain them and bring them in. Would, <laughs> would the uh, perfect strangers come in, please? Uh, <laughs> would you come in, please? Uh, whatever your name is. <laughs> right there. Janet Willits and Henry Calfane, huh? <laughs> Mr. Calfane, uh, where did you know Mr. Fenneman from? He was a stop at the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco. I met him then. He was sleeping there in the Stopping lobby? Stopping at the Fairmont yeah. Hotel, that most famous hotel in the world. Well, who was this fellow, dear George? Was he the hotel detective? Is that how you met him? No, uh, I think Henry is known uh, to most people in San Francisco. Uh, Henry is known as Henry of the Fairmont, right? Right. So what? I'm Groucho of the Bidewee Motel. <laughs> Did you arrange this before you came on here tonight? No, I... Uh, Did you talk to him before the show? I met him in the hall and uh -huh. said I was glad to see him down here and... Uh, and you said you'd fix it with Groucho? <laughs> that, uh... <laughs> no. I only what, the... what did he say to you? He didn't tell me He just greeted me as a larger gentleman. What are you doing this joint? Uh, I why, run... why are you so famous? I run the ballet shop dance. Do you do a ballet dance? Ballet shop dance. Tailoring department for the last 45 years. Oh. Well, how did you become acquainted with Fenneman? He doesn't have his clothes pressed, does he? <laughs> and, and what is he to you? Is he a distant relative? Just friend. Mr. Fenneman was stopping at the Fairmont Hotel. He sent for me. He had a suit and a blouse to be clean. Gotcha. You were wearing blouses up there, George? <laughs> was this in Chinatown? No, no. This is at the Fairmont. This is my wife's blouse. Thank goodness. Uh... <laughs> and you take care of your wife's laundry? Is that what you do? No, I... Uh... Oh, you'll know when you go on a trip, you, you call the... Well, I know. The, uh, I, you, you run downstairs with your wife's blouse and say, wash this one? No, they... <laughs> Could I go now? Uh, I brought them out here. Oh, well, wait a minute. Before you go, George, uh, there's two shades in my room. Will you take those and, and have them back Friday? Wait a minute, George. I'm not through yet. <laughs> Your name is Janet uh, Willis, is that right? Yes, but everybody what? calls me Carrie. Yeah, well, never mind that. What is your connection with Fenneman? Huh? <laughs> I never saw him before. I'm We've a veterinarian. We've never met, honestly. Did, yeah. did he talk to you uh, before no, you came out no, here? No, I've never seen him. You've never seen him? No. Is this the first time you've seen him? Yes. Were How you shocked you when you, you saw him? Yeah, he's handsome. <laughs> you can go right on that. What, what sort of work do you do? I'm a veterinarian. You mean you never eat meat at all? <laughs> I eat meat. Well, what do you mean? Uh, you a veterinarian? The dog doctor, the horse doctor. Oh. The only kind of a doctor. You treat dogs? Right. And you say you've never met Fenneman before? No, <laughs> I thought perhaps you'd given him that poodle haircut he's got. <laughs> what do you get for a haircut? Poodle haircut. What size poodle? Uh, about that size. Black. Oh, and well, we get seven fifty for a Dutch Seven fifty, huh? I pay eight. <laughs> Suppose well, I can make it eight if it makes you happier. No, I think it'd be better if I stayed home and ate the poodles. <laughs> Henry, let's get back to you. Where, where are you from originally? You say you were... Uh... I'm from Constantinople, Gracio. Are you? Yes. Well, that's a noble country. Well, what is it actually that you do for a living besides being in cahoots with Fenneman? <laughs> <laughs> cahoots is right near the Fairmont Hotel. <laughs> and they were in cahoots there for about three I years. I have run that tailoring shop in that famous hotel, Fairmont, San Francisco, for the past 45 years. I see. Well, what, I do, you, what do you do there? Well, I run the ballet shop, this. 
Yes, of which is tailoring department. Oh, the tailoring department, huh? Do you ever find an occasional lost uh, buck or two in the trousers at the <coughs> hotel guest center? Oh, yes, Gracio. I have found as much You must as be worth a fortune, huh? $90,000. You found $90,000? Yes. And I returned every cent of it. And you retained all this money? Why did you return the money? You could have gotten away with that. So I can sleep comfortable at night, Gracio. Couldn't you sleep more comfortably if you had $90,000? No, no. Well, I hate to change the subject, but uh, how would you like to win some money on the show tonight? I'd be you fine. Like we would like to, yes. Would you retain it if you won oh, some yes, money and give it a Fenneman? Yes, yes, I would. Uh, would you ask your confederate to come in? Uh... Mr. Fenneman, you are wanted. Yeah, by the police. Yeah. <laughs> Are you satisfied with the uh, VIP treatment that he yeah, received I, uh, here? I think it was about par for the course. Yeah. Now, what category did your friend select? Uh, you uh, chose the category of President of the United States. Yeah. As, if, as if he doesn't thing. know. Yeah. Oh, boy. So, uh, well, Bill, Carrie, you pick the first question, since you two... You understand you have uh, four chances to make $500, and the $100 questions are easy, and the $200 are a little more difficult, and the $300 are the toughest of all. How, how, how tenderly he, he said that to them. <laughs> Four chances to make 500. Two, three. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, don't look at the answers. That'd be going a little too far, I think. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't have minded if he'd have looked at it. <laughs> I got him in his glasses. For a hundred dollars, who was the only man to be president and father of a president? You better talk it over, because she <laughs> may know something too. Adams. John Adams. Isn't it strange that the foreigners always know the answers to all historical questions, and the Americans rarely do? You now have uh, one... What do you attribute this to, George? He's a friend of mine. <laughs> well, that's good enough for me, huh? <laughs> you have 100, you're going for 200 this time, give a total of 300 if you get it. For $200, two presidents were West Point graduates. One was Eisenhower, who was the other one? Ulysses Grant. Ulysses Grant. And you know, you know where he's buried? You know who's buried in Grant's tomb? Yes, I know. You told me that. <laughs> I've been listening for you for the last 13 years. Oh, really? Well, and your, your show cost me a lot of money. My wife invites everybody to my house every Thursday night. And I have to feed them, then we play poker, we always lose. <laughs> well, I want to tell you, I've, I've, I've stopped at the Fairmont Hotel. And it's a wonderful hotel. It is the I, best. I love it. it. it well, I don't know if it's the best, but I like it. And be sure when I go to Frisco yeah. that you speak to the manager that I don't get charged my rooms, huh? I'll give it a complimentary room for I promise to before this trip. For how long? About? For about a week. Oh, no. Oh, a week. A week? I might as well stay here. I was talking about five years. <laughs> because I have an awful lot of pants. <laughs> My breath comes in short pants. So well, let's go on to the next question. Well, you have $300. Oh, uh, that two more show. chances to make five. This will do it. For $200, what was President Pierce's face name? Pierce. What was his face name? I couldn't tell you. Well, guess. Oh, Andrew. Andrew? No, no it was Franklin. Thank you. Well, you have one more was, chance. He was Franklin. He was named after George Washington. <laughs> one more chance to make 500. You now have $300. Yeah, you uh, For $200, what former president was coordinator of the European Food Program in 1946? I knew the gentleman, Herbert Wolf. H.H., did you press his pants? Yes, I did. Yes. Sure. <laughs> wind up with $500. That's what they call the seats of the mighty, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be back later for a chance at $10,000. Congratulations. Hi, George. We'll have two couples to try for the big money tonight. Now, here's the first big question. Who's going to answer it? Uh, Penny Kelly and Jim Balboni earn $500, so, I mean $800, so they get a chance at two, five, or $10,000. Hello, cutie. <laughs> now, you understand this game? You pick a number, Penny. You're a girl. For $10,000. Any number around here? Uh, I wouldn't be able to 
stay in the same Penny. house. My There's brother, only seven. ten numbers. Seven, all right, my brother said. And you pick a number for 5,000. Uh, number two. Number two. Now, before you start, if any other number comes up except these two, this question is worth a total of $2,000. Clear? Clear. Fire away. Two and seven, your number came up ten, so here we go for a total of two grand. Ready? In 1899, three commercial travelers formed a group which by now has placed a Bible in virtually every hotel room in this country. For a total of $2,000, what is the name of this group? What's the answer? Uh, Hilton? No, I'm sorry, it's the Gideons. G-I-D-E-O-N-S. Sorry you missed it, but you still have, uh, how much do they have? 800. I would say that's a, a good night's work for a young couple. <laughs> uh, Janet Willits and Henry Calfane won $500 in the quiz, so would you come out again, please, folks? Well, how do you do? Well, you know, this year, if you win 500 or more on the quiz, you get a chance to run your winnings for the night up to two, five, or even 10,000. So, uh, one of you pick a number for $10,000. Seven. Seven. Put up the seven. Now, you pick a number for $5,000. Three. Three. Now, if any number other than these two comes